Tom, rings of power. Mm -hmm. uh, do do I do I jump in? No. Hurrah! I saved my time. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are we how are we doing with it? I um after seeing what was it two episodes that they released at the beginning. I've seen I've seen the first two episodes. I'm going to be a bit self-indulgent and, and read some of the words I wrote. <laughs> I said, uh, judged on its own merit, the show flounders in its opening episodes to give a good reason for its own existence above being a lavish fantasy series beyond aesthetic parallel. I was on the money. <laughs> <laughs> it looks gorgeous, but so little happens in it that it, it it's not, this is not like, a slow teasing out of details. This is glacial storytelling. Um, I, I'm I'm still watching it, and I have to say, I'm not coming away from any of the episodes thinking, "Oh God, I'm wasting my time." Mm. There are still elements of it that are genuinely good. Uh, not just the fact that it looks incredible, because it does, and they have re realized um peter jackson and the wetter workshops aesthetic perfectly it mm. it it looks like it fits beautifully in in that set of films um in that universe and some of the performances are really good this lovely young man here elrond he's one of my favorites um he finally they're getting elves right in a in a tolkien thing he is joyful and happy and capricious just like galadriel then well let's let's hold on, <laughs> on that one um but compared to elrond as we see him in in the fellowship of the ring and in the hobbit movies who is very very serious very dull um the, he actually acts like an elf in this he he's light and lively and happy and it's just really as a as a tolkien fan more than uh, a Peter Jackson movies fan, it's really, really gratifying to see somebody get that characterization right. And I really like him, and I think he's brills. And all of his scenes, especially in um, Casa Doom with um, Durin, Prince Durin, soon to be Durin the Fourth. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> he's those bits of it are great mm. and engaging and fun and interesting and wry and it, but around that there is this obsession obsession with the the both the high politics and the low culture of the island of Numenor um Numenor is like a a Tolkien version of Atlantis essentially super advanced men uh humans um who are awaiting their prophesied doom where the island sinks beneath the waves. Uh, and all of that stuff is so boring. It, <laughs> it's just so boring. Uh, and uh, I'm clock watching every scene, which really sucks because at the beginning, because all of those scenes involve Galadriel, who you mentioned, who is super stern and super hardcore and very fighty and, and, feisty and undefeatable and <laughs> you know she's she's obviously got a lot of plot armor on she's not going anywhere because you know we know where she ends up um and i think that morvis clark is is playing her really as scripted really well as in she is doing a really good job with what she's given i think um, I really rate her as an actress and and the first two episodes of Rings of Power, I was like, yes, she is, this is absolutely it for her. She's made it. She's got a part worthy of her skill. But the writing just isn't living up to it. And mm. with three episodes to go and still nothing having really happened of any consequence, it's a really tough recommend. Um so mm. maybe we're not, not. we've maybe already season two. Maybe I, maybe yeah. season two. I, I, I agree with everything that tom said it's it feels like someone's gone you know the hobbit just 
just wasn't long enough. Wasn't long I, enough. <laughs> I, I, I reckon we could. I reckon we could take a story and stretch it over fifty hours. What do you reckon? <laughs> what do you reckon? Uh, but but exactly like Tom has said, I'm enjoying watching it. Even though when I'm watching it, I'm going this this uh, isn't going anywhere. Uh, but I still come away exactly like Tom said. Go well. Do you know what? I I still kind of enjoyed that. So yeah, I'm, I'm still with it. Just. 